Um, okay, so um, did everyone get a copy of the May 18th minutes? That's the last meeting minutes that Terry is caught up on. She's been away a little bit, so we're still a couple meetings behind. Um, so if you take a moment to read those, we're going to approve minutes. And it looks to me like I, um, for some reason, I've been not putting that on the agenda. So that's just my oversight. We'll make sure that they get on the agenda. Motion to approve. Um, one minor thing on the last page, seconded by Marilyn Warner. <laughs> I don't remember who seconded it, but. <laughs> I'm tied, so I have to do some time. You may, sometimes happens, you both go like, second? Yep. Sorry. You can have it, Jen. No, it's okay. Some of them because 
something with them. Who's the point person? I've got a name in my office. I was talking to Alan Sherman. Oh, yes. Today. Um, the, other, the other thing on my chair report is that, um, so we've been talking about Columbia gas leaks, and um, this citizen group had a forum on, mm -hmm. did anyone go to it? I went. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, I might ask you uh, a little bit later, maybe under other business, to give a, a little um, summary of it. But I did want to say that one of the things that came out of that is that they're energized to continue pushing on this issue to get the gas leaks um, uh, corrected. And they actually have a, an agreement from the president of Columbia Gas to come and meet with them. And it's actually now been coordinated with the mayor's office, so it's a proper public meeting that's happening here in this room at 1 p.m. on June 27th. So we do not need to duplicate that as far as I'm concerned. All of us can come because now it's an open open public meeting and um, you know, bring questions. So that was just part of my um, report. And then you had something here, Todd. Okay, so it looks like on Saturday, June 18th, there's Complete Streets Demonstration Day. Oh, is this where they're blocking off portions of the street? Yeah, in front of City Hall, uh, and some additional plantings, I think, will be there as well. So the uh, area in front of City Hall will be expanded to tighten up the radii of that corner. Then the uh, alley will be blocked off, and that will be an extended area for uh, to make that crosswalk shorter. In front of City Hall, as well as the uh, bike lane added um, in between the, or kind of at the side of the uh, sidewalk. I think also they'll have the um, designs. I think there's four or five uh, designs for uh, Main Street based on the previous workshop. So they'll be there uh, for display to take a look at it. Right. Okay. It looks so like it's just between 11 and 3. 11 to 3. Yep. So if anyone wants to mark the calendars, and it is, is there a, will there be an opportunity to write down comments or to give feedback in some way? Uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be to write down comments. I can. Um, I think there's going to be another workshop around uh, Main Street plans a little bit later on, and I can forward you the drafts of those too. Thank you. Uh, that's it for my chair report. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I sent everyone a hard copy the email of the inventory and then Rob uh, pointed out a couple of errors that I had in there. Um, so I don't know if you want to go. You want to I, I, I think this is a perfect time. I gave you 20 minutes, so okay, I, I think there's um, enough time on it to. So I, I, everyone here has a copy of it, so if you haven't seen it. Does, do you have any physical copies? All right, let me just see if I can get in there. Can I just see if you yes. out? Oh, thank you. So what looks to me is if the bid, I'll just kind of talk if you're reading, looks to me is the bid is probably not going to be on the street until sometime in early uh, July just because of the timing, because of the current laws. Um, the other issue is, is that I had a conversation with Julie Cruz today from DCR. Um, she informed me that this, the federal government, the USDA, has not released uh, the funding mechanism that the, the state gets for the for all, all the grants, not just ours, but all of them. So um, that probably won't happen until after the first of the year, but it doesn't really impact us because we have already forty six thousand dollars in the account uh, that we can expend. Plus, we won't actually be getting any bills for this until the actual project is anyway, so it's not going to fall. So that really has an impact on us. So the grant is secured, um, our funding source is secured. Um, so I'm confident uh, I answer that. Place. And actually, I'm, I'm feeling a little more confident after speaking with Amy Hillman from Davy Tree, um, who said to me roughly that we would end up costing about eight dollars per tree to actually do the inventory, uh, which is you know, roughly around forty thousand dollars plus another three thousand dollars to do the uh, urban forestry management plan. And then um, 
I wasn't sure about the price for the actual identification of the plans and sites, so I, I think that's built into the as of doing as of doing the tree inventory itself. So, so with that, um, I'm feeling a little more comfortable that we could actually increase the amount of proposed planting sites that we request, which would be seven thousand to two thousand. Um, I think it would be beneficial. Um, Rob did point out to me that we did talk about at the last public sheet, uh, the last meeting we had, we did talk about changing uh, the uh, planting uh, planting location. And I don't think that I, I did not change it on the one we have, but it's going to actually be three by five instead of four by four. So that's uh, because of the nature of the uh, width and the length of some of our empty tree belts. Very, very few of them, Rob pointed out, are not really four feet. So the soil will be three feet. Can you point out where that is? That's on page six. Uh, second paragraph down where uh, it says further consult to identify 2,000 planting locations within a one and a half mile radius of the center of the center. It's line number two. Three planting areas should be a minimum of four feet. Like yeah, four it feet. should be three by five. I just didn't have time to change it. Well, I, I wonder if it were three by five, then if it were the uh, cutouts, whether it would exclude some of the cutouts. So, so can't can't be three by five. Or well, what you could say is you could, you could say a minimum of a minimum of a th a three by four, or a minimum of uh, three by three, and then those are all included. Right. Then you really start to limit your right. Three by three is pretty small. And it would be only for a small yeah. tree. Yeah. But I'm just thinking wording. If you said it was um, included anything as small as four by four or as small as Three by five, then it would pick up before all the four by four cutouts plus anything that was in a tree belt that was five feet long. Is that wrong? Uh, no. There's another way to slice it. Uh, first, I would, I would look to Jay and ask Do you feel like three by is the absolute minimum you'd go? Because another way you could do it is just minimum 15 square feet. I would say three is Okay. So well, three so by five and four by four are the same thing. For square footage. Almost. Roughly. Well, you could you could say a minimum of three. One one at least one dimension has to be a minimum of three feet. It's got to be at least fifteen square. Fifteen. Fifteen square. Oh, that's good. That was so set that one more time. Um, the uh, minimum dimension yep. is three feet. And by three? No, no, it's it any, any, any minimum size. Like, any minimum width or whatever. Yeah, minimum width, width of, four, of three feet and a minimum total square footage of 15. Mm -hmm. so that's a big way. It's like describing minimum lot size. It's They're going to come with like a Z, so right? So the smallest <laughs> thing we're going to get screwed somewhere. Can you get the word hotness in there? Or you don't <laughs> <think that's laughs> All right, we're overthinking this. I think we can defer. Can we let Rich figure out the language? And I mean, you get the idea, Rich, right? Yeah, <laughs> I get the idea. All right. Well, I think that was a really good solution. Uh, let's see. So the other thing that was changed since the last time is that um, the, uh, the actual, what we're actually requiring them to do and how they're actually going to quantify <coughs> survey techniques and the data and how they're going to capture it all. I, I reworked this whole thing uh, basically using uh, a model that I got from Davy Tree. It has been, this is also in a lot of other uh, inventories where it actually uh, breaks down, um, instead of having just bullet points that actually want to talk about the individual uh, location and DBH, it actually delves into things and it's actually a little more uh, specific for each one of those things. Um, which I actually like um, because it actually does primary does primary maintenance needs and secondary maintenance needs, um, which I think is really going to be helpful to us, especially where it says primary, um, which is on page four. Uh, under primary maintenance, third bullet down is the jump tree train. Something that we had talked about last time. Well, you weren't here. We talked about trying to capture the trees that we planted uh, because some of potentially some of actually potentially some of the trees that we planted from Amherst Nursery and some of the bare root trees will actually fall under our uh, one and a half, one and a half inch, one yeah. and a half inch uh, DBH. So um, 
we may have to actually, I may have to reduce that. We may have to go to an inch and a quarter, or maybe an inch. Um, but that will create a problem because then what's going to happen is you're going to have you're going to have a lot of garbage trees picked up. And that's what, what Amherst did. There's a, I believe, uh, their sampling was at six inches. I don't think they could do less than six inches. In there. Sure. You know what you might, might do is um, just say for trees that are in tree belts, then kind of reduce size because we didn't plant any hardly any trees, small trees that are outside the tree belts. It's okay. Well, the only thing is you can't specify tree belts because that's all they're going to do. So if you go to Sylvester Road, there's no tree belt there. Like there's no tree. No, it can't say, uh, you know, all, you know, take care of all the trees that are over inch and a half, but in tree belts, take care of all trees that are as small as each. That's pretty complicated. You know, both. No, no, what I'm saying is that we, you know, we would like, I should think we shouldn't count the ones that we've planted, but the way to capture that on this is to actually say that we have to reduce the caliber inch. So right now it's an inch and a half, which is the threshold for a tree, a, a legal tree in the public right away, according to MGO Chapter 87. That's why I left it at an inch and a half. Because anything below that, um, yes, we can take an inventory of it, but we also don't know the law supply to it. So I don't have that much shape on there before, so. And, and it might pick up a whole bunch of little saplings. Correct, and so like on Sylvester Road or Kennedy Road, you're gonna pick up a gazillion Nori Mabel. So can you, I mean, what, I mean, we can we can maybe work out some, I'm sure there's an easy solution to this, but one thing could be one and a half, DV, minimum deviature of one and a half, or any tree that is visibly recently planted. You know what I mean? That's obviously recently planted. Oh, yeah, that's so we know where we yeah, You really can tell when a tree's been sure. planted. I mean, it usually has a little, you know, mulch ring. And so we, we could give them a list of all trees that are planted. Because that data is there. That's you true. Know, yeah. it's, it's not highly organized or anything. But it, it exists. So we could I could work with you, Rich, if you want to kind of, I could also check in with Molly and about some language, but I'm sure that there, I don't know that there needs to be a group of no. eight discussion. No, it's not, but it's good that because I, I really like to get this thing done. Yep, okay. I'm happy to, I'm happy to put in some thoughts if you want to. Okay. I have a quick question. Yes. On page uh, five, it says the bolt last bolt of point space size, the minimum dimension of the drawing space type recorded in heat. So that's referring to the, um, to the bullet above it, right? Yes. Okay, so it's it's about rooting space, not physical space. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. It makes more sense. I must have when I read it before. I was confused. Okay. So, and I think uh, Joe Cook has reviewed this. He's pretty pleased with it, the way it looks for bedding purposes. So, um, you can make some minor changes and then we'll just put it on the streets and bid the way it is. Did you? Deciding whether or not it's okay to do the sort of like fast track bidding process for environmental services, or does it have to go out? To it's going to have to go in the. Uh, it's going to have. This is going to have to be advertised in the newspaper. So it's just like a mm -hmm. yeah, because it's over uh, thirty-five thousand dollars. But the nice thing, a couple things that's nice about this horizontal design services don't have any percentage cap. So for example, if uh, we ended up uh, having to make a bunch of change orders that went over the amount we budgeted for and we were able to find the funding for it, there's no issues. A lot of times it's either 15 or 20 percent, you can't see that value mm -hmm. of the contract. Um, Yes. 
street block of parks. Mm -hmm. And we would just identify what those parks are and then they would give us a price for them. And then depending upon what the overall bid was for the trees in the right of way, um, if we had enough money, we could uh, pick one or two or all of the alternates and we can actually have uh, the inventory would also you know, take into consideration park and cemetery. School, possibly schools. S schools as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So it's, you know, the alternate piece is, I think, would be beneficial. We don't have to accept any of them. If we have enough money to just do one piece, we can do one, and then we can actually, you know, do another inventory for those other things like the talked about originally. But I think it would be good to, to have some alternates. And the process for that is after the, after they come in to then no. Put that back out. No, what you end up doing is you end up having a bid. Uh, this this will have actual a, uh, this will go out and then on the back of this there will be actually a document, one page document that uh, basically uh, asks for the vendors for the price of this document the way it's written. And these are the alternates as follows. The price for Sheldon Field, Arcane Field, Mains Field, Veterans Field, and then Trinity Road for you know, the Pocket Parks, Trinity Road Park, Kolodzinski Park. Pulaski Park, things of that nature, even though we have a little bit of a community where we want to, you know, we have to incorporate the one park itself. So it was also an additional management. Yes. So yeah, so it'll be another it would be another it would be another piece of that, but that would be that would be part of so the overall bid is going to give us the trees in the public right away, the tree risk assessment, and the urban forestry management. And the alternates, those are priced out to be included in the urban forestry management plan and the tree risk assessment. So we have, you know, if, if, if the numbers are right, you have the chance to capture a lot of information. Uh, don't necessarily have to use it all at the moment, but at least we'll have the database to, to start with. <coughs> seeing this just because I didn't get it from you till last night and I was in the cave. So does anyone object to me taking three or four minutes to I'm on page four now to finish reading this and then I don't know if everybody else has read this story or Jake's reading it for the first time. Um, I just would love to do that and then we can go ahead and vote to approve this and be on our way. Is that all right? We're, we're doing pretty good on time today. All right, thanks. If we have an expert looking at every single tree, they could easily go whatever.
I have, I have actually not seen in any one of the RFPs that I read, they ever, none of them talks about cable. They don't really talk about it. I think actually it's going to be, I think I would say this is my own opinion, the cabling really is going to be up to, it's, it's going to be up to the, so if presented with a tree that is a risk, that it's either deemed to cut the tree down or we try to cable the tree, that's really not going to be the decision of the harvest that's going to be the right. that'd be the decision of the tree. So in other words, they're going to flag it. They, well, they are going to flag it. They're going to flag it by telling us that this tree has a very poor root crotch. And it's, 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 it's uh, inevitably for failure, it's extremely high. So then we have to mitigate that. So they're going to flag all those hazards, and we're going to end up actually those are going to work to the top of the list, and we're going to have to deal with them. So that's how. What if it's not yet a hazard? What if it's just like, a, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, the heritage tree grant I wrote with the specimen trees that were enormous. They had, you know, each one had like six or seven cables put in them. And none of those branches were really at, deemed at risk, but that they are just like, it's gonna, it's gonna lengthen the life of that tree if those, those particular branches are cabled. I'm just wondering, you've got someone looking at every tree in the city. I'm just wondering if it's not a missed opportunity. Or at least, but you know, again, I, um, that's also part of the tree risk assessment as well. So when you're doing tree risk assessment, anyone who does the tree risk assessment is track qualified. They're gonna actually identify um, what needs to be done to the tree and they're actually identifying the primary, three primary maintenance needs of the tree to prevent it from being a hazard. The cabling is one of them. So that may be captured in there. So instead of it being spelled out that we're gonna say that every single tree on this street has to be cabled, um, that will be spelled out individually through the tree risk assessment. Okay. That's how I did it when we took the class, of course, in the mind. Okay. Okay, it's possible you can create a liability if every branch that could be improved by cabling it then falls off and you have a cable that Well, what the tree risk assessment is going to do is it's going to really identify the trees that are at potential going to fail, uh, imminent failure. Right. So those are the ones that will be addressed immediately. And that's addressed under the conditions. Page three, the health and structure of each tree that we recorded. And that will trigger a particular look at that workshop was one was, was risk management, yes, right? Like exactly. It wasn't like eliminating the risk. Right. Right. Risk, risk management. Yeah, this is really good. For I'm going to question that too. Question yeah. under specification. Yes. So it's uh, inventory shall be an ISA certified arborist. Should there be something about equivalent in here? Mass certified would definitely qualify. Connecticut, somebody who's certified in Connecticut. Or equivalent certification. So just clarification, I, I read that that somebody at the top of the, this hierarchy will have that certification, but the people who are out in the field won't. Oh, okay. that's an important distinction. Is that what I mean? Huh? I'm assuming that the firm will have one guy who's certified and they'll send out a bunch of other people who don't. No, it says on if you go down four lines from there, it says teams, groups, and the trees and collecting data must include an ISA certified artist. Right, right. But, 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 but that, does that mean that 10 guys show up, including a certified arborist, and the 10 guys disperse to the city and do their survey and then come back and then get there? No, each team or group. Yeah. And then what they're going to do, they're going to be required to do is actually submit. The firm or individual must submit the resumes of all personnel who will be assigned to this project. So every person that's going to be out in the street, we're going to get a resume. And I get to review them all. And then each team has to have a certified arborist on that team. It's part of the bid to offer you the resumes? It's, it's a maintenance requirement. It's, it's, it's a requirement. Must submit. So that's what you're put. So after <coughs> anywhere it says ISA certified arborist or equivalent certification. Right. Right. Yeah, that may, 
I, I read at one point loosely that team just meant the whole group. Mm -hmm. no. they usually, they're hiring people that can identify trees and identify tree risks. So there may be somebody out of college yeah. who has some training but maybe hasn't got the certification yet. That would be just somebody off the street. Yeah, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. It's a special organization. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, I'm looking for a motion then to approve this RFD for circulation. Motion to approve.
there needs to be on our part a real documentation of our dissatisfaction with this um, or reporting of it. I do plan on going personally um, and um, probably speaking in front of, in favor of the tree because I just don't see I, it, I don't see why it needs to be removed. Um, um, and yeah, and so I would hope that um, if you deem it healthy and there's enough objection that there be some sort of um, really significant exchange for losing um, a public resource of that significance. So anyway, that's just, that's my take on it. I really want to see this never happen again. It's a big trigger. And it was an healthy trigger. When's the public hearing process start? For the, for the, for the train? Yeah. Oh, we should train that evening. It's already started because it's been advertised in the newspaper <clears throat> and it's posted on the street. So, uh, it's, 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 really, it's really risky to express your opinion on something. Yeah, I, I, I won't, I won't um, you know, speak on behalf of the commission. I'm going to speak on behalf of myself. You should, you should, you should draft a letter. Yeah, I can do that. Submit it to me. So what will happen is people object and what happens is it goes in front of the mayor and the mayor makes a decision as to what happens to the tree. I think, I think it needs to be, I think the mayor needs to know, if he doesn't already, he needs to know that this should never happen and something's got to be tightened up. So I'm happy to be the one to, I don't know. Well, I think, it, I think it's uh, important for us to record these types of scenarios in leading up to our proposed changes on the procedural side mm -hmm. of the overall permitting process, kind of the, the cross discussions that need to happen and the flow chart that needs to be developed between the, the building, DPW, and the planning departments. Because right now it's kind of a, you know, the owners may be on the developer, but one could argue it's on the city to provide some basic literature that outlines a fairly flow chart. Really, you know, flow chart of yeah. an incredibly complicated, ridiculous process. So that's the problem. As soon as somebody gets the building permit, that's all they ever really care about. You know, once they get that hand in the then everything else is like, ooh, I did yeah. Well, there's a lot, yeah, there's going to be a lot of that, and especially with the significant tree ordinance, uh, you know, someone might cut down the trees on their lot and then a month later go in for something that needs a site plan permit and be surprised right. you know, that they actually need to go through a process to identify those trees. And meanwhile, you know, we've lost the two trees, the design is already, you know, yeah. we've yeah. missed the opportunity. So I think the more we pay attention to this, have some sort of recording of these issues, both on the procedural side and then on the design side, where you know missed opportunities in the, in the design world, where um, you know there could have been a, a shade tree planted and there wasn't. Those I think are going to back up our you know push in the next year or so as we play around with the ordinances. So another thing that's caught this is uh, not a relevant situation is that. <laughs> Same kind of situation, uh, 130 Spring Street, uh, which is a 18 tall auto body, actually went from the planning work for a site plan review to build a Morton building uh, that is uh, greater than uh, 2,000 square feet. And they got the site plan approval to actually put the structure on their property. However, their, the plan that the uh, individual brought forward to the planning board was a hand-drawn plan that actually had uh, no survey points, no survey pins, didn't have any information about the public, um, what the public right-of-way is. And back in 97, when they rebuilt Spring Street, they actually took a lot of land takings. Uh, and Spring Street is 66 feet wide, that's our right-of-way. So a lot of uh, his fence and uh, a lot of the trees in the front that are on the back of the sidewalk belong to the city. So they, uh, one day, somebody called me up to tell me that they were cutting trees down in Spring Street. So I took a ride over there, home to old. They had one small uh, blue spruce uh, partially cut down. It was pretty shot. They had, so I stopped them, and then I went inside, and they asked uh, Tom Pease, I said, look, you know, what's going on here? And he said, well, I got approval to 
So I got a pool from a planning board to cut down all these trees and everything. And I got a pool to build my building and my driveways uh, for another 24, 24 foot driveway for the next property to access it because it is a commercial lot. So I had to stop him as well, kind of the same type of situation. He doesn't have a building permit. Um, but this is after the significant tree owners was passed? I mean, is it, is it just not being adhered to or followed? No, he was aware of it, but the issue is... No, is it by the planning board? I don't know. It's, I because you, need to, have a, you need to have a, a, a tree inventory mm -hmm. as part Carol. of the plan. I spoke to Carol on the right at the day that it happened. I asked her what happened. And hand-drawn plans without yeah. a survey are getting That's in front right. of the planning board for approval. And that is something I need to communicate with the planning board. That's weird that they would accept that plan. So I'm sure it's not like right. Yeah. So, so you think that the rec would say you have to have a survey drawing stamp by a part of the area over here? Now, I, I will tell you, I will tell you one thing. I think DPW, I think DPW might drop the ball on this a little bit, um, and I'm not going to say where in our office, but there was a, because when planning board does a site plan approval, the site plan approval comes to the DPW for review and comment, and then goes back to the two plans before it's approved. So it went through the channels of our office. It didn't come across my desk. It went through engineering, and then it's possible that due to the fact that uh, Jim's no longer here and done city engineer, that it, it got it got missed. But to me, that's to me that's even besides the point. In order right. to get a site plan approval, okay. really you got you have to have a set of submittals, yeah. and those submittals have to be you know adhered to, and there needs to be a checklist and. You know, the planning department, the department goes through and checks off everything that's I been submitted, and then it goes through the process. I don't believe so. Exactly. All right. Well. Um, so my, I guess my point is, is that there still is is a large uh, gap. Sounds like a lot of what uh, of flow of information. So I talked to Carolyn and explicitly expressed to her that any kind of site plan approval that involves anything of that nature that I need to see it, that I need to be included in the emails that yeah. goes on. Do, is there something we can do to support you in that? Can we write something on behalf of the commission that we then pass on the planning? Would that be helpful? Just to officialize it? I mean, you having a conversation with Carolyn doesn't... Well, mine's a, mine's a great email. Okay. Oh, yes, can. Would that be helpful? Sure. You could just write a nice email statement that we can aware of two situations. At least, at least the one situation that involves the building inspector. And the other one involves the building inspector. John, is that like something that you could draft? Oh, God, help us. You're, come on. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, you got the nice suit. Yeah. <laughs> so the suit to do it. I mean, I think it would be helpful to this meeting. I think it would be way more effective than me, you know, snarking at a public hearing about a tree that is doomed to be removed. <laughs> um, that we write a letter to the planning department bringing to their attention two cases, recent cases of um, lack of whatever adherence to proper flow. We, I don't even know if it's lack of adherence or if there is no. I will have to say that here, the, the tree, the, uh, the planning board did adhere to the mitigation of trees in regards to one thirty spring. Yeah. He's, he's already, he's already written in his Plan board approval that he has to mitigate any trees that are removed. He's removing uh, four, I don't know, it's in my truck, there's four small trees that are in the front. The rest of them are that has it because they're dead. Well, we're talking about 86 Massasoit and then 115 Street? 130. 130. One, one, 86 Massasoit Street does not involve the planning department. That involves the building department. Okay. Well, 130 Spring Street involves the planning department. So do we need two letters then? One to uh, building and one to planning? I would say probably two would be the appropriate. One to the commissioner has work and the other one to uh, Wayne Flight. Can we, can we have you to work together? Or I'm happy to be part of that? Yeah. We'll, I just feel like we'll the, more, the more we officialize this and, and, you know, professionally express our hope and intent that the, the better we'll be heard. Okay. Does yeah, anyone object to that plan? No. Okay, great. It, it, it puts me in a little difficult situation when I have to go to a resident or a builder and say, you know, you have to stop doing it because yeah, you're violating right. this ordinance. 
it makes when, you when they actually say, well, hold on a second, I have my, right. my planning board decision right here that says that I can do yeah. X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, the planning board decision doesn't, doesn't know that what you're doing is cutting trees on city property. Yeah. You know, and so there's this, it's, and I felt bad for the gentleman, but he was very polite about it. He could have been a real jerk, but he was polite. And then he stopped everyone and he said, okay, so I'll tell you what I have to do. And I'll do it the right way. And he says, can you help me uh, select the uh, trees that would, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because the planning board is requiring to make a screen along Spring Street. That's right across from where Grow Food is. I, I'm familiar with Yes, that. so he has to put a screen up in front of the fencing that he has there along his property uh, for a buffer neighbors similar what they did to came back uh, motor field. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's an, actually an American Elm over there that I discovered. Uh, there's two of them. Wow. Um, that he, the driver was going to go right with the American Elm. I said, no, no, it's not. It's got to go this way. About 25 feet. So he was amenable to it. It's right. going to work out, yeah. but it's just a matter of the process. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm way off schedule here, so I'm going to try to rope us done. in a little I'm bit. Any, anything else in the you no, no, okay. okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to look up something and start a video. You're like a six-year-old video game. All right. Um, so we're moving on to spree, tree species list. Selected them from these two books. Came from I was supposed to get together, but I got sick last week. And I never got it. I've got another list. Those two. At least that way we can kind of work. So this separates them, these two books separate them according to the size and location for planting. But I don't know if this is still print this is what maybe it was. Is that Cornell? Yeah. yeah. Urban yeah. tree. Hmm? Urban tree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Urban tree site assessment selection for stress tolerance. I downloaded it on my phone. Oh, okay. It's, right. Right. it's hard to use on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not useful. It's from the line. Yeah, here's the made list. This, oh. this was um, huh. when I hired Navy Tree to do my plan. They did the list. So this is the only thing that I've never had to go off of. So it's just another data point. Um, but I will say buying trees, oftentimes everything on the list is available. And you just work right. with what fits your philosophical event and is available. Okay. All right. Um, what, what was the other one other than the Okay, and so uh, I'm just um, going off of a yeah. uh, conversation I had that these these things. sufficiently match the right species with certain site conditions. Correct. Right. Yeah, this this that's exactly the format that I kind of had in mind. Whether or not all the columns are what we want to go on, but you know, identifying its its general habit, whether it's drought tolerant, can handle poor drainage, type of soil, can handle salt. You can summarize everything into urban tolerance. But, um, How we get bring to a well, and then also, is our hope to, um, to basically institutionalize this throughout all the departments, planning and building, so that everybody has a list and we're all singing from the same page? Yes, I think that would, I think that would be the ultimate goal. I mean, that's, you know, so some, that's, some of the stuff that's in the ordinances is way off. It's way, way off. <laughs> well, I think it's got a lot of ash trees. Yeah. Yeah. I frankly think we should apply for a grant as part of phase two and um, attempt to create one of these. And this can be not only used for Northampton, but there's no reason why something like this can't be used for a lot of communities in the valley. Um, yeah, it's like well designed, it's a good graphic. Good yeah, layout, good flow. right. Yeah, it makes um, sense. And we don't, we, you know, we haven't been able to find one that's quasi-local yet. We um, haven't, have we asked around in other, like, Am Amherst? You might have one years ago. Yeah, but I don't think you know anything close to you know that identifying the form, and, and I'd like to even expand it to. See, Cornell is. Yeah, I've been using this. It's just, um, <coughs> uh, 
I really prefer that approach. from a builder, from a planning perspective, from a like getting someone to adhere to a perspective. Uh -huh. That's the format I think you want to see. This is this is good and a lot of information, but you have to kind of sort through. I mean, it's very detailed. You got to sort through each one to kind of choose that one. Says you can go down and oh. sort it by you know public shade tree specific in an urban environment with a you know. A height limited form and okay, click these are my species that I can choose from. This and you got to paw through it. So is that available in electronic form where you can sort? I don't know. I think it's a PDF. Oh, it's only a PDF? Where's that? Where's that? That's Over right. mine? That's information I think deeper in the document like as supporting detail but in terms of a you know a, a, a landscape architect student who's doing the site plan for some of the site you know they're not going to go through that they just want to pick one and go for it and I think this that would be applicable to site plans subdivisions parking lots that type of stuff. so I, I got a question um, there was one uh, Rick Harper gave a presentation today about uh, new recommendations for tree diversity and he talked about how uh, pests, especially emerging pests, tend to eat not just at the species level of tree but at the genus level and so the new recommendation, this is not news to some of you, but the re new re recommendation is that one in every genus, uh, the, the, sorry, um, that there no be, be no less diversity than one, there be no greater than 5% of any genus in the city, not just species, but genus. Um, and so th how, does, how does that information help someone who's got a site plan diversify? What's preventing them from going, I want to put in all crab apple trees? If it's a site plan, then it's probably a part of the review. Yeah. It, doesn't, right. it doesn't matter quite as in the, quite as the ordinance I'm supposed to review. Right. Yeah. So I would review it and take notations of the, the planting selection and the species, and then I would. I mean, I what you're talking about is actually something somewhat separate that the city would have to track based on the original inventory, and then um, you know updating that as time goes on and seeing where we're at in the flow of things. And well, first thing we'd often agree that that's a reasonable. Goal. I, you know, I don't know that it's a reasonable goal for private plantings, but what I'm saying is I think it's reasonable for us to try to prevent monoculture when it comes to new site plantings, or very close to monoculture. I mean, I don't think we have to go for a 5%, you know, diversity, but I do think that we should, there should be some measure for us to go, ha, 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 there's not enough diversity in this Totally, and that can be incorporated into the site plan guidelines that okay. the planning board is reviewing. It can be right. can be incorporated into their review structure, okay. which probably is not there. Okay, so we have to know that somewhere in all of your as you're forming all of these site plan, you know, specifications. I, uh, I know it's really not time to go deeply into it, but there's there's the five percent diversity, and then on top of that, there's a layer of um, age of tree. So, uh, for instance, in North Hampton, we have a lot of really old because they were planted all the way to the tree belt. But almost in the tree belt, no, no, and you probably won't have any young ones. So there's a dimension. In other words, he keep, the guy that you what? Yeah. He keeps track of the dimensions of the trees as the age, or not just the species. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Do we want to, are we, do we feel like we want to take a little bit of time to review this, or do we want to go ahead and approve a um, one of these versions of tree species list? I want to vote for a combination. Jay, did you say that in those two guides you s selected species yeah. for harvest? Yeah, I think what we need to do is come up with a format and figure out how we're going to get this information. Yeah, yeah. the unique format for us, the North for us. format. Yeah, I don't think we need to make a decision today. 
No, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I drew up the format, and it's before I saw that, it's that yeah. format. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's two, there's two, two, two uses for this. One is the use that you're thinking where it's handed out to people. And just, you know, please follow this guideline. And then there's also what we, Rich, might be doing uh, using the Cornell book for planning to see. Well, we could switch this material into that format. Right, yeah. Uh, no, it would be a please in law. You know, yeah. law. You know what? Law. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking to have this incorporated right. into right. zoning ordinances, subdivision rules and regulations, site planning yeah. and procedures, and also be the official right. public shade tree planting guide in the city. Okay. All right, so, so that we're not reinventing the wheel, I would like, I volunteer, to ask Molly Freilisher if there's anything like this that already exists. It just it just it seems like there there should be like why wouldn't there be so even if it's just a skeleton that we can dump you know the information we want into it um, so I volunteer to do that in the meantime do you feel like there's any need for us to review the species that you selected about how many is it I personally don't think I have the expertise to, so I'm going to bow out of the I totally trust you, Jay, to have that knowledge in. Is there any electronic link anywhere in that document? Like an activate or something? Uh, there is, so I'm on their website, and I think they're, it's not set up the same way the book is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the website is very nice and it's very user friendly. It doesn't play around with it. Vermont? So. Yes. Vermont Urban Community Forestry. Uh, so they actually do uh, species topics of uh, species selection. And then what happens is it provides you with a uh, drop down drop down, drop down menu. So um, they ask for a topic of species selection. Tree, you know, you can do anything on benefits of tree, tree inventory, species selection, tree planting, tree care, mulching, pruning, urban forestry planting, green infrastructure, invasive forest, best of storms. And so uh, public policies, town forests, and youth. So there's a lot of information in here. Great. Um, I, I really am kind of surprised that the East Yard doesn't have something. So that one's the Vermont Tree Section Guide by the Vermont Urban Community Forestry. This one is put out by the Urban Horticulture Urban Horticulture That's called Urban Trees Site Assessment. Site Assessment. Site Assessment. Site Assessment. Okay. All right. Shall we move on to the next topic? Anything else about this? It's about 80, 80 plus trees. And you took into account um, anticipating climate change? Uh, at this point, I'm not sure how much we can, can try new things, but I don't think it's going to change quick enough to make it. Like last winter, we had 20 below and 50 degrees in the same week. I think they, well, the Cornell book had sweet gum in it. It doesn't sweet gum in it. Yeah. Um, but I think that probably got on the list in the last 20 years. Yeah. And so when you say, changing. sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you say 80 trees, do you mean like 80 genus? No. You mean 80 species? Right. Okay, and how many genus would you say? Uh, Yeah, there just aren't that many acceptable. I mean, the, the 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 struggle is that they, like what Andrew says, they have to be in production. You know, yeah, at a nursery level. level. Yeah. And then the other struggle is they're just, you know, such a harsh environment. They're just not that many. All right. So this whole five percent thing is kind of pie in the sky. Five percent presumes that you'll have twenty different genuses. 
It was kind of presented as something to strive for. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of goals that are quite in the sky. Okay, all right. Yeah, and I think, and I think, it, I think it can't be... It, well, and there's newer, I mean, there's newer stuff that's coming. I mean, 10 years ago, you couldn't find a um, summer sweet plethora, you know, and that shrub is planted everywhere. There's three different varieties of it now because okay. it's a native, so... I brought up, Rick brought up a good example. He, in the state of Massachusetts, 57% Street trees are in the maple family, and another 18% are in the oak family. So that's 80% of our trees are in two genes. Yeah. So we can get it a lot more. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. All right, well, um, I'd like to give time for Marilyn to introduce a little bit of the tree memorial program. Okay. And I might have you cut it a little shorter than um, we anticipated, just because I would like to also talk really quickly about that. Um, Volunteer intake form that I um, I okay. kept in. It's been weeks and weeks now. Well, a few meetings ago, um, I don't know who brought it up, but the topic of memorial commemorative tree program came up, and I offered to do uh, some research and just get the conversation started. So this is just like draft one. Um, how much time really? Like five, Let's ten minutes. No, fifteen. Okay, good. 10, All right. I would say five twenty-five. Okay, so, I mean, this may be like common knowledge, but just as a brief overview, I mean, we all know the benefits of trees, both environmental and cultural. You know, like one statistic, a mature tree can absorb as much carbon in a year as a car driven 26,000 miles. So, um, and cultural trees are part of the living memory of our past. So this, there, there are some organizations and um, municipalities that have memorial, commemorative tree programs. You know, it's advertised as a living gift, provides individuals, groups, clubs, and organizations the opportunity to enhance and beautify the community with trees while providing a lasting means for remembering your loved one or in the part of the event. Um, so there are organizations uh, such as a living tribute, the trees remember, seeds of life, the Arbor Day Foundation, that do tree plantings, commemorative tree plantings, mainly in the national forests. But then I was looking for um, municipalities, um, something that we could, um, you know, explore as examples and perhaps mimic some of their successes and learn from. Um, here in Massachusetts, I'm aware of Belmont, Cambridge, and Lexington programs. There's also one in uh, South Windsor, Connecticut. Um, they're all administered by their DPWs, um, they're coordinated through different divisions. For instance, in Belmont, it's the cemetery division because the trees are planted in Belmont Cemetery. Um, in Cambridge, it's coordinated through their urban forestry division. Um, in uh, Lexington, it's coordinated through its um, public grounds superintendent. Uh, and then in Windsor, it's the parks and grounds division. Um, the price point, which of course is a factor to consider, is um, anywhere from $200 to, which is in Cambridge, $750 in Belmont, and $1,500 in uh, Lexington. And so some of the differences are, for instance, in Belmont, you can do, you could um, commemorate a loved one or an event with an existing tree and that would be for 750 or by planting a tree or either ornamental or a canopy tree and the price point for planting a tree is whether it's with or without a memorial plaque so without it's 200 with it's 750 which is quite striking to me because when i started looking at how much commemorative plaques are i mean you can just get them for as little as like 50 dollars so <laughs> What well, two hundred dollars is not very much yeah. for a tree. Where, I was going to say, where do you, Didn't where do they get a tree that's a tree? Which I was like, what is that? Yes. So in the cemetery, there are um, some existing trees oh. that you could um, have a small memorial plaque, you know, affiliated with that, and you pay seven hundred fifty for that very large existing tree, or you could have a tree planted. Um, and they give you, you know, a list of trees to select from. And all of these planting of trees, which is the case with Cambridge and Lexington, um, 
bas basically the um, the coordinator is organizing the purchasing, the planting, staking, mulching, watering, and maintenance. And s some even uh, will guarantee, uh, like in Lexington, you're paying $1,500. And that also includes replacement guarantee. So if the tree uh, is diseased or is needs to be removed. And, um, you know, these all go to, you know, tree funds in those municipalities. Lexington also offers a memorial book in their town library, um, so you can write about the person or the event that's being commemorated. Um, I can go over some more of the details, but as first steps for something like this in Northampton, of course, we need to discuss it amongst the commission, but some of the questions I had were who would administer it, because of course there's an application process, there's financial transactions, there is overseeing the selection, purchasing, planting, and maintenance, there is publicity, record keeping, whether it's online or as in Lexington through a memorial book in their library, and then of course um, how do we want to, how do we want that tree to be identified with a memorial? There's all sorts of things, plaques, bracelets, and signs. I want to ask you guys, maybe Jay, you're most familiar with this. Some of the plaques are actually like a, like a bracelet that goes around the tree. Because some some of these, I mean, if you look, there's things that you can stake and you know they, they take up room and you'd have to make sure that grass is clipped around them. But the bracelet, you know, you just put it around the trunk, right? Assume it's spring enough that it'll allow to grow. And then it's just like a little um, plaque, so you have the person's name and the dates of their lives. And I've never used them. I've seen them. Oh. Well, it's not they just they just squirt through the tree. Uh -huh. Oh. Are, the are there any problems where they don't actually affix anything to the tree? Where there's another way of associating that person with with uh, a, the person honored with that tree without there being a thing, a piece of blame on the tree? Well, my next step is I actually, um, yeah, I want to contact, I haven't yet, but contact these three municipalities and then talk with the people who are coordinating um, them. It, does, it sounded like from the Cambridge um, webpage that there isn't something to identify. And I lived in Cambridge for 10 years. I never remember seeing any thing like oh look that tree is commemorated too so you know they're all on city property and they might just have a record somewhere it didn't indicate um, if there so could just be a database if there could just be like a link on a website that yes says, database of memorial trees with the name of the person mm -hmm. memorialized in the location of the tree boy would that be yeah i'm and trying to keep things let the family have a you know oh, right like little Piece of space to write, you know, yeah. you know, five lines or whatever, yeah, and be done with this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My vet's office has something like that. You maybe even upload a photograph. You know, I mean, uh, so much is done online now. Yeah. I mean, every you could have like your own page. Um, what, but, what, mm -hmm. so, um, what do you do if it doesn't? Like we had a memorial tree on our campus that construction was done on the left. Like, I mean, I've heard that it's a problem with the program. It's, it's definitely there's a solution to it. There should be like a, you know, a piece of plan for replacing it. Well, if it's a tree that we would plant anyway, it's just incremental funds and it doesn't, mm -hmm. in other words, I'm assuming the tree that's being planted is a tree that would be part of the program with or without. Actually, that's, that's, ideal not true. that's ideal. We're to me. already planting trees, so why not dovetail right. it? It's like right. absolutely. Uh, stack this, I see this as right in step with our shade tree program. Mm -hmm. Right on. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're going to plant a tree and you want to have this person to memorialize through this tree planting, you can just say, "Oh, this is the tree this person." Yeah. Yeah. Right. And actually, along with five hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, yeah. in in in, in future. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. I mean, I, I do think it should be a program well, where... Well, why do it? Well, as far as the plaque... Maybe to memorialize the person who died. <laughs> the, the digital plaque, um, Rich is working in, in a UBW on this map where you'll be able to click on a star and it'll tell you when the tree was planted, and what species it is. 
I don't know, but could that have a also say this screen is a memorial? Sure. Right, so it could have an added feel. I, I do want to say something about Cambridge Belmont. I've grown up in Cambridge and been sort of fearful of Belmont all my life as a kid because it was, a different, it was crossing to a different zone. Cambridge was always more uh, uh, mixed ethnically and racially, and Belmont was pure as could be, and where good people with more money lived. And so I'm very strongly in favor of having a lower price so that people who want a memorial tree don't have to come up with very, very much money, uh, more equal. Um, and I think if it doesn't cost us, except for entering the data on the map, um, it, it's, it's just incremental money. I think we should always be aware of administration of anything. That's yeah. what I was just going to say. Like, I know, it Rich, you're not. already like, what well, the Tree Commission is doing, you, you're, you've said it's great, but it's just adding to your workload. So, uh, Rich, I think, has the hope that it's sorry, something that, that he one of us or a couple of us could administer. Yeah, the, the, the website eventually will have pages or access to it for people other than Rich. When it does, in theory, someone else can enter that. Yeah. That data. That the city will allow that. It's uncertain. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. The problem, the problem is, is that it's you, once you start doing that, um, then you have the ability to erase data, mm -hmm. and so Ooh. that so that becomes an issue yeah. because that will be the GIS layer, the black box tree. We have as well. have an online form or a, or a paper form, and it's accompanied by whatever X dollar amount is necessary, and they submit it with the name mm -hmm. the who's doing it, you know, and then does the blur picture if you want it, submit, plant the tree, and <laughs> it goes up on the website. Yeah. But does Rich have to do, does Rich have to do? Well, we've got to process it. Yeah, yeah, guys, it. Someone's got to, you know, and, you know, process the, just, but just like they're processing a street tree request now, yeah. it'll just be a little bit more information that they can upload onto a separate site of, you know, a Hampton Memorial tree site. Okay, well, this is just the beginning of a conversation. It's not a high priority for 2016 at all. We have much bigger fish to fry, but I think it's a really great start. And I, um, it's Actually, Belmont on the way to from Cambridge was the John Burke Society. For real. I mean, they have been building the John Burke Society. I, I would just want to make sure that if we are going to take money for this at all, that it's got to pay for itself. And I mean, we've got to consider every possible cost mm -hmm. and not sh shortchange ourselves. I hear the part about not wanting to be exclusive. On the other hand, I don't want us to be kicking ourselves for having well, invented something that takes more well, money to The other way you could do it too is you could actually allow um, you can build into the cost of the tree having a private contractor plant. Somebody who's served by Arborist. Mm -hmm. So we're not really involved in it at all, really, other than actually uh, approving, the site. Approving, approving the site and then actually having uh, however we decide the funding mechanism will be and how you know, the individual wants to plant a little tree. They will contract with St. Frank to plant one of the trees that is on our tree list in this location. Will you approve this plant to plant? Tree, and we're really out of the business of planting that tree. Someone else is looking at their cost. What about the maintenance? Well, the maintenance would the maintenance would be our uh, you know there's probably a year guarantee from the uh, contractor to plant it, and then uh, that could be part of the form, and then after that we're responsible for it. Okay. The city is responsible for it. You know? now, there would have to be a certain amount of money, um, possibly. I don't know how that would work though. It's for maintenance of the tree. I don't know if we could actually set up an account to do that. It would just consistently roll over. Mm -hmm. um, they do have funds, for example, the Bates Tomb and Bridge Street Cemetery. There is a memorial fund for that that actually was given by the Bates family. And the money for that, for that particular tomb, can only be used for that particular tomb. So it's the mayor's office, and uh, they want to get down to the level of having $100 for. You know this particular tree in perpetuity. I don't know that mm. it might be just a large maintenance fund that it goes into. So, for example, another example would be at the cemetery when you purchase a lot uh, and you want shrubs. 
the individual uh, who wants the shrubs, as long as it's okay with the cemetery form and the different correct species that we have listed, then they give it a hundred dollar donation per shrub. It goes in professional care, and it's the end of it. Is that what it says? No shrubs. Like there's like right you go and it says yeah. no shrubs. And he says no shrubs because people just come and they start planting right. things, yeah. and then yeah. next thing you know we're chopping things up. Yeah. Since we're already going to be planting trees every year going forward, perhaps a way to start is just to advertise that we're going to do a certain number. Like this fall, we're going to be planting approximately whatever 50 trees, and 10, 15 will be designated for a commemorative tree program. And maybe we could do it as a trial, create like simple online applications. Good. And if we're already going to be maintaining them to the city because we're planting them then really it's not too much more work well and we have to determine how much we're charging for this yes yes yeah. yep okay i i personally don't think that this needs to be a 2016 thing uh-huh um i would really like for us to exert that discipline of seeing yep. 2016 as the priorities we already identified mm -hmm. um but i i think it could be potentially 2017 mm -hmm. Or just pitching it as a pilot, as part of our fall planting. Not to overwhelm us, but just yeah. to start it with even five trees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other questions, thoughts about that? Yes, yeah, just like, you know, what if I just wanted a tree in my front yard? Hey, you see the same thing, I like to have a tree. You know, it's, like, it's a memorial tree. You know, like, it's <laughs> like, fine. You can you do know, whatever you want with your own tree. You know, it's like, hey, you're rough, plant a tree in my yard. I decided this is my favorite tree, right? Andrew's, you know, it just seems like. I've already been doing it informally to tell you the truth. Yeah. When, you know, last fall when we planted trees, I told people, I'm planting this tree at this site in memory of your dad. You know, it's not, that's fine. You can always do that anytime. And, you know, and people do it. Like, you now my friend, when she drives by the Northampton Community Music Center, she looks at the tree and there's her mom. So I think that there's nothing stopping us from doing that at any point. And certainly people set back trees, absolutely. Um, we're just, just talking about maybe there being an income stream and a little more visibility around it, get people excited about the program. Okie dokie. Um, how many of you have laptops? Andrew does. I, I created a Google um, form. Where's that? Where's that reside? Did you send it out? Send it out to us? I think I did. Yes, I know. Why? Entitled for invitation to edit. Yeah, it says Northampton Public Shade Tree Volunteer. Is it a form or is it a? It's a form. So it's something that when a person fills this form out, that all that information gets dumped onto a spreadsheet. She sent it out May 8th. The title is Untitled for Invitation to Edit. And my, my hope in in um, creating this was to it, to immediately create a system for managing volunteers. This would I would turn this over to, to Rich so that as people come forward and want to volunteer for the city in some capacity, that he'd be able to, to refer them to this form, help them fill it out. It goes to a spreadsheet. And you know, and one of the questions is skills I can offer. One is community slash volunteer organizing. And maybe someone comes forward who is willing to take this on as their project, organizing volunteers. But since there is no um, uh, rational system at this point for capturing volunteers, it just seems to me like an easy solution. So, well, maybe short term, or maybe permanent solution for, for um, bringing people in in a system. How, how would we, um, how would people know to fill that out? Like, on the website? Uh, we can put it on the website. Or in an email. You could either, if they come in random ways to any of us, we can send them a link. We can also have a link on the website. And to capture those who have already expressed interest, perhaps we could either mention that in our email, in our efforts to streamline Please complete this even if you've already expressed interest, or we could do that manually. We could, we could, merge, we could merge the spreadsheets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, that's what I would probably do. I mean, there are some questions I'm asking here that we didn't ask in the original survey, but it's okay. Yeah, it's really okay. Um, all right. So, did any? Do you want me to go down the line on this, or are we comfortable with just me working with Rich to get this underway? Motion to get it underway. I, I don't know. I, 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 um, there are there are a small group of people already organizing a volunteer group that have a lot of web skills uh, and have other ideas of how to do it. So I know if we're, we're just uh, doing it. Oh, do you want to turn those people to me? Or vice versa? I mean, it's a, no, a Google I, form is a fairly... You can send, I'll send on what you've done. You know, they're, they're talking about getting the website. And okay, we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about volunteers for the city of Northampton. Maybe right. you're talking about your Northampton Shade Trees group. Well, I think that they're thinking of trying to organize in such a way that they can volunteer. That, but so, kind of, kind of simple question: volunteer amongst themselves, or volunteer well, to be attached to? They're trying to form a group that can, that can manage volunteers for the community. Okay, so so that like uh, friends I, of public shades or something. Friends, friends of public shades, which which in turn would use a form like this to capture right, but volunteers. They're, but they're on, they're, they're on to do whatever they do. I'm not going to be sure. But shouldn't they be in touch with Rich? Yeah, at some point there needs to be yeah. a link on our page that goes to either that group or this form. Right, I mean, at some point they, they have to get organized. Right? So it doesn't interfere with the organizing work of volunteers already. It would just be a way of kind of saying, hey, these people want to help. Here's this piece of paperwork. Well, here's the yeah. box. And Here's the problem, is that you can have all the links on the website, like right now we have a link that goes toward our tree, right? But I think only one or two people have ever gone to that group um, since it's been there. So um, I find that the way to get setback trees, which we've done a lot of, in 30 or 40 since that has been there, so we need to talk to people to get that done. So this group of people is trying to figure out how to make all this work and I think that they I mean it's fine you can put the link up on the site but I just don't think people are going to go there and click on it and when they do just like the data we got from when we sent out the, the web survey a lot of people said it would help but actually when you send out an email blast to them you don't actually get um, so you've captured yeah, names and an email right you capture names, names it's great but, but then when I sent I took off that list people who said that they would volunteer it wasn't all that productive. So I think the people that are, there are a couple of people who are thinking how to make this more forceful and, and actually get a group of people who will be cohesive and actually. So volunteers organizing volunteers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm trying to get volunteers to do it. And I don't see that, it, and Rich, I mean, Rich is overburdened, so I mean, it'd be great if he had more time that volunteers would just land on his, Yes. So, you, so it's like this is just a piece of paper that you fill out and you get there to help. And that's okay, right? I guess it's a, I'm trying to figure out what the goal is of the form and how it can supplement the volunteer effort. And right. that's what I'm kind of confused about. Well, there's this. nothing wrong with the form, I did it, except that it would just go from, from the form to Rich and then back to this group. So, no, no, that's not my vision. Right. Um, so, for example, if, that, if one of your people who's an organizer filled out this form, right. you capture, oh, this person wants to organize. Let's, let's have her or him be the one that actually manages this database. And right. whenever, whenever anyone comes to, to the city, any of us or her, and says, I'm interested in volunteering for trees, we go, great, I'm going to send you a link. Fill out this form. It's going to go to whoever, Miriam. And Miriam will will help manage right. those volunteers. Right. So this is exactly. just so this is just an organizing tool. Right. It happens it, to be a good one because it's yeah. um, anyone can get on Google Docs, right. and um, you know it's straightforward. It, right. the, you know the question is, did I capture all the areas we want to capture? And, and well, I guess I would leave it to this group to organize that. So I would take what you've done and hand it to them if you want to, and see what they come up with. How they're I wonder if it would be worthwhile to actually have that group actually come in and talk yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. Because well, I, I, I think it would be good because I, I feel like we're like there's we're we're talking about the same thing, but we're also running parallel with each other here. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So if there's a group of people that want to be volunteers to organize volunteers, then there has to be 
a way to capture that information, which Melinda has put together in a spreadsheet. That is uh, something that's approved that can be that can be used and posted on the city's web page. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that it would be on the web page. But see, the problem is, is that you can't you can't have people volunteering to do tasks in the public right away without permission from the tree lord. Right, of course. It is. No, of course. So it, no matter what, in the end, it's going to end up in my lap because the volunteers are going to say this Saturday. Right. We have the volunteers to say the vol we have a group of people that want to prune X, Y, and Z trees. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with it? They've all been trained, yada, 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 and that's, the permission has to come from me and that's the end of it. But my point is, is that I think that before we start handing data to people that we don't, I'm not saying I don't know who they are, but I think it would be nice to actually meet with them and actually have a little a group discussion. It doesn't necessarily have to be in front of a whole commission, maybe in front of a few commissioners, so the commissioners can come back and say, this is what it looks like. I, I, I don't think know, that's the only thing I'm afraid of. I, it's I think everything would first go off over your desk, but the question is, do individual volunteers one at a time go over your desk, or does an organization no, I think of volunteers I, come and say? I Rich. think an organization of volunteers, but I think right. the people that are going to organize the volunteers have to come in front of this right. commission right. and have a conversation with all of us and to you know and understand from their point what they would like to do and what they want to accomplish. And then, of course, in the end, they have to be given tasks. That's my only point. I don't really want to have control over it. I just want to know that if they're going to go out and do some pruning, that they all have had some kind of training, they understand what pruning is all about, and then these are the trees that get pruned. Which is just an extension of what no, I know. I know. I'm just thinking. So, I mean, it's, it's an extension of what we've been doing. It is an extension, but I, I think not, that. It's not different. It's a little different because it takes, instead of actually having you, for example, who has been actually putting all the volunteers together um, with the help of uh, Marilyn and Jen, it's going to actually take that away from the commissioner, in a sense, and it's going to end up going to an individual um, group that really doesn't have any type of representation or ties to this commission. So we have to find a way just to bridge that. It gets, right. it gets back to what we. That's all we started this volunteer discussion was to have a subcommittee made up of mostly non-commissioned members who are interested in volunteering and have one person sit on the subcommittee as a liaison with the commission and come to the report back. Right, see, I thought I'm, I'm coming from an my, agenda well, item. I'm, yeah. I'm moving off of what Todd just said, is that, is that this is moving away from the commission. There can be a liaison, liaison on one person. Sure, so how about we meet this person or these people? Do, you, um, do we want to... You want a, a July or August meeting where we yeah. invite them to talk? Yeah, just like August. I would just like August? Meet them and okay. Do you want to? to um, do you want to give me their names and I'll invite them directly? Or? No. no. Okay. I, mean, I, I feel, Lily, that what happens is that on projects that I'm involved with, you exert a level of control that's unacceptable for me, and so I'm trying to do this aside from you. I mean, even with the door hangers that I'm doing right now, it's just like kind of like. I don't like, I, I just find it very difficult to work with you, so I'm trying to work independently. Okay, I don't know how to work with your feelings because they're confusing to me. Um, but, uh, and, and they're not, they don't feel collaborative. I find um, it very difficult to work collaboratively. Okay. Because the level so of I'm trying, concern. I'm trying nevertheless. And I think that we have to. Um, I'm not asking to be in charge of this. I'm asking there to be you know, Communication just, and collaboration. I was just trying to make door hangers so that I could get the door hangers out in the in the, the green, which you've held on to the door hangers. Even. I just find Rich, would you like to speak to that? I, well, I think first of all, let's, let's get a couple things straight. Okay. I struggle a little bit as a tree warden. The fact that matters that I'm totally responsible for all the city trees, no matter what the commission says. Okay, that's what it amounts to. Whether we have commissioners that work well with each other, whether we have, whether we have volunteers that work well with each other. The issue at hand is, is that there is a group of people that want to volunteer to help to plant trees or do some kind of tree maintenance. Those people need to come in front of this commission, in front of me, to figure out exactly what they need, what they would like to do. Tell us what they'd like to do, how they want to be organized. But as a group of commissioners, we have to communicate with them. Well, I, I, I wonder that because I, I did review with. Um, I mean, there was a question, right? Is the commission involved in running this group or is it the tree warden? 
No, but I think, I personally, my, my own personal opinion about what, how this should work is really, in a sense, is that there should be a subcommittee of people from this commission that works with these volunteers who want to corral volunteers, if you know what I'm right. saying. Because right. what it does is it personally takes the burden off of me from having to meet with individuals consistently. You know, it's hard enough doing my job every day with the amount of people that I have to talk to. And I'm not saying that I don't want to talk to them, but I would like to find out who these folks are, find out what they really want to do, and then say, okay, we like that idea, we're going to do this. Now, they, I may say to them that I don't want them to do this without my express permission. But in the end, anything that happens to a public shade tree, the phone, my phone rings. Have you considered putting like a deputy board? I just, well, I just want to point out something, right? Is that, is that I, when this came up at a previous meeting and I asked, is the commission going to run the, the volunteers or not? Do we want to be involved in the volunteer business? And I thought it was decided that the answer was no. Well, have, I, I, having a subcommittee and running the volunteers, I think, are two different things. I think structurally and for the sake of uh, long term sustainability of uh, volunteer work and also so. Rich's job is doable, that there needs to be a subcommittee that has a, a member of this commission on the subcommittee, and that that subcommittee, through that representation, reports to this body so that Rich, so that we can collaboratively and collectively make decisions on X, Y, and Z. And if the subcommittee is planning on doing something that is unacceptable to the commissioner, for whatever reason, to the, we need to 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 to, to, the, to the to the tree board. Then we need some sort of mechanism to report back to that subcommittee. But I think it needs to all, you know, it's really three three entities working collaboratively. And I think we just need to create the structure through which that passion can be funneled up, and so that but but so it can all be coordinated. And both of these things seem like they can coexist, like your existing pool of volunteers that you have these great personal connections with, and this device that um, tool that Lily has um, proposed. It, it seems like they can they, they can coexist, and that this can grow uh, with with your um, leadership and being the, the liaison, and then this can continue to. Um, bring more people into the system and be something that's uh, easily accessible and trackable. Um, it's a great organizing tool. For, for example, we, we heard the uh, speech from the uh, gentleman from Worcester today. Uh, what, what, the, the lady from Worcester that actually spoke. What, what is the Worcester tree initiative. Okay, so th there's an example of a volunteer organization that is a volunteer organization that is by itself that is involved with the city of Worcester and trying to uh, you know, re re replant the streets that have been decimated by uh, Asian Long Island Field. But they, anything that they do, they actually work through the tree board and through the city of Worcester. Co correct, but the way that our administrative structure is set up present by the mayor's office is that um, this body, the job is to advise and assist the mayor and the tree board in these kind of matters. So I think it would be best to continue to, to funnel those kind of things so we can actually meet these folks, actually figure out what their skill set is, and or maybe you already obviously know, and just talk to them. I think that's really where it has to start. Um, and I you know, and I think the form that we have, if they want to take that form and run with that form, or they want to change it, it's a Google Doc, you can change it, you can do whatever you want to it. But it just has to be a form that is basically approved by someone. That's all, and said, okay, this is a great form, let's use it. Because then these people that are volunteering really are people that are representing what we're doing at this table. And that and that way what I'm doing in, in my job. Because if something goes wrong with a volunteer in a public right away that's pruning a tree that I'm responsible for, then I have to deal with it between the volunteer and the resident or whatever it may be. I see that it's separate from running like a database online. You know, well it is it is separate and Part of the problem that we're having, I'd be honest with you, is an internal one where we're, we're really struggling tech, tech, technologically, we're really struggling. We're actually going to implement a new work order system. Um, we have one person in our office who does all the GIS, Andy Keith, and he's just totally overrun and overloaded with work. Um, 
and we don't really have a good we don't really have a good handle on um, tech, getting everything completely done that in that nature. It's really a little bit of a struggle because we have three people in our IT department that service the whole city side of the business. So there's 500 employees that have three people to run the IT department. And then we have individual people like Jim Thompson works in planning. He does all their database work. Andy Keith works in our department does all the database work. So that's where all the inventory information will be sent to. So I think it would just be good. I don't want to make this into a giant thing, but I think it would just be good to meet the folks and who they are. Yeah, we, you know, of course, there's nothing about meeting them or who they are. It's just a matter of who they're really reporting. I, I, I just don't I, feel. I don't think we disagree, Bob. And I would just like to meet what I feel like is a misrepresentation of me at this table right now, just to set the record straight. You, you're under the impression that I am somehow controlling on certain aspects. Like, the, let me just finish. Like the door hanger. Faye gave me copy for the door hanger. Great. That day, I edited, sent it on to Rich's um, desk. Rich is a very busy guy. He's the tree warden, though. He, at the end of the day, makes the decision whether that content is acceptable. So, yesterday, he gave, he gave the thumbs up. I can't, I can't, and so there's this perception that somehow I'm controlling it. It's, it's, well, so I, what I would like better. is I would like respect, respectful and direct and uh, communication between us that gives each other the benefit of doubt. We're all, we're all working together for the same, with the same cause, and I don't have any animosity toward you, and I'm not sure why you feel like I'm holding on to, to areas that, that you want control over. Okay. It's not my interest. He's, he's the boss, and, and I'm just making sure that he has his stamp of approval. You know what would be beneficial? To sit down with me and maybe somebody else and look at the emails that are built between us. And I just think that would be very revealing. If you look at the emails, they're... they're sure, I'd be happy to. To, to, me they're, to me, they're a problem, and they're a problem to the people I've shared with. Okay, Rob. Right. Okay, that would be fine. I'd be happy to involve a third party. I don't want to spend any more time. You can do it yourself, just with me, and look at them. And I can point out to you why the emails are really out of place. You're welcome. To, you're welcome to speak directly to me. So I, I, I don't want to take any more um, committee time on this, except to say that I'm, I'm totally interested, and I hope that we can get to a place where we're all moving in the same direction. Well, I, I, I think we can. I think it's just that we have. As a com we've been off a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a year and a half. We've been off a lot. We've done a lot of work. And so we are trying to figure out how to do more work and how to actually gather folks to help work. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it amounts to. How we get there is really what's most important because it's the process before the action that we have to set up. So that needs to be figured out. And yeah, we need a we need a structure that, yeah. that makes sense and you know. I think, the, I think the right structure, you know, we can debate that, but I think the right structure is some sort of subcommittee because maybe you move back to Belmont or Cambridge and without you, without that right. liaison to these folks, mm -hmm. at some point, you know, we're gonna, there's gonna be some sort of like, what? You know, there, ha there, just, there just has to be structurally something that exists of a reporting mechanism and approval through us to the warden and well, believe me, if us? we're if we're why, yeah why through us yeah, but I understand because that's what we're here for that, that's our otherwise this is going home we, we are the advisory committee to the tree board there, are, have, no, there are a number of tests that we can do that do not involve approving uh, structure who does or does not volunteer but if anyone in this that's table not what the structure is that's not what this that's is, what it is it's not who who's doing I, I don't it. want anything to do with it nothing you do I. Right. But but structurally, it has to go through this committee to the tree board because that's that's the essence of what the committee is. Yeah. So in the end, so in the end, after the structure has been established and the volunteers have been set up, and we understand who they are, or I understand who they are. Those volunteers can actually communicate with one volunteer can communicate with me directly. Right. But I think the commission has to take several people as a subcommittee. I agree with Todd and actually review. How that structure is going to be and is how it's going to work, and the and the volunteer liaison of the subcommittee reports, you know, when they got something to report on, say this coming month we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Fantastic, awesome. Yes, 
what you're saying about my leaving, part of the whole point of my not just pulling this together myself, which I'm not very good at, but also is that I've found, I'm finding, I've found people who have very good computer skills and who are very interested in doing this. And so I've got at least two people who are good at this, maybe three. Um, right, but I couldn't form a group of volunteers and start stomping off into uh, a conservation commission uh, regulated swamp and start tearing stuff up. I would have to go through. But wait, 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 wait. No, but it's an example. If you do something as a volunteer on public property for the city, it's, it has to be a, a structured thing. Otherwise, it's it, 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 you're kind of operating outside of the bounds of the. I just want to say that. I, so what, what's happened is that I, I already have volunteers who do work, and we don't go through the community; we go directly to Rich. To Rich. Right. And I just want to make sure that that is not interrupted. I, words, I, the bottom line is what Rich wants. It's uh, to me. I, I think it's true. Either one of these things could be real. They could. You could work directly with Rich, or Rich could say, "You know what? I want the committee's input on this." Right. So I really defer to what you want, and so, I what I hear is. That you're, so, I'll let you speak for yourself. So the mechanism that works the mechanism that works is that Rob um, not only is a commissioner, but he acts as an agent in a sense for for me to go out and he actually speaks to people that want to do set by rings. And I send him emails consistently of requests that I get. Any requests I get, I, I send the email back to the residents and see Rob and said that Rob possibly would be in touch with you, so on and so forth. So that actually system that seems to work pretty well. Now we have to. Now we have people that actually are volunteers that want to organize the volunteers to actually maybe take some of the heat off of what Rob does. Like he just admitted, he said, oh, "I'm not so good at the computer skills. You know, I'm good at knocking on doors. I'm good at planting trees. You know, I'm, I'm, however, I'm, I'm taking offense if I'm missing something." But, um, I'm good at so what has to happen is that if we're going to have a group of people that want to volunteer to do things, then a we need to figure out how to capture those people. B, you've got to have a structure that give this, there's a four, has to be a format. So this winter we're going to put uh, five groups of four people together who are volunteering. And Mr. Parcelletti, we would like to, we would like to prune X, Y, and Z trees. But in order to get to that point, we have to have some kind of a structure that, some kind of structure that says that this is how it's going to work. And I don't think that Rob and myself can manage a whole bunch of volunteers. I think that is just beyond my scope. It would almost be like in the sense that we have to form, we have to have a group of people that are like the like friends of Northampton, friends of Northampton trees. It would be volunteers and that they would actually um, be given tasks in your life to tree planting, to tree pruning, to tree watering. They grants. They can write grants. Well, the thing that I learned today is that in Worcester, they actually, this group of uh, folks in the Toronto Cheers, they actually, they work hand in hand with the Department of Public Works and the Tree Warden, and they have their, their water trees. They do everything. Mm -hmm. So they are supporting what they're doing, but they're an all volunteer group. They're not all volunteer, they actually are staff. They are staff. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they, I don't know how they, yeah, they have kinds of things. But there's got to be a volunteer organization somewhere in the state that does exactly what we are wanting to do. So we need to find where that is, and if it's something that is a good model and it works, we can copy it. That's really, I mean, that's in a nutshell. But I need a couple of people in this commission to help me, or to help Rob in a sense, or to help me as well, to find that model and figure out what works, and that's your subcommittee. And I just want to clarify, because the last time that I was here for a meeting when we discussed this, Rob, you, you affirmed that this wasn't your strength. Marilyn affirmed that it was her strength. I affirmed that it was my strength. So I'm not sure why, just because we're all sitting around this table as commissioners, does that preclude that we also can't, as volunteers, work on this issue? Like, that, we're organizing volunteers? Yeah, if it's a strength. I, I, I just don't understand why the pushback. I got the impression that this commission wasn't really going to be. I'm not talking about his commission. I'm talking about as you as an individual who is also a commissioner is a volunteer for the city of Northampton. Right. So right. can any of us also, would you agree that any of us can do that? Well, yeah. You're, you're okay. Free to do that. Well, that's what I was doing. I was I was, I was, was filling a need where you expressed that it, was some, some, one, right. it wasn't something you were strong at, and I thought, okay, I, I know how to do this. It's, it's, there's a simple solution to this. And that's what I was offering. But I guess what I'm saying is that there's a new Excuse me? Gotta go.
There's a new field of group forming that I think I would prefer have them pull this together, including looking for models that are coming to us. Right. Oh, but I think we need to have a couple of commissioners actually spend some time as a subcommittee if you would so choose to actually investigate that. So yeah, we actually, so we actually have, we actually come back to the commission as a whole and say, these, yeah. are, the, these are the three models that I found across the state that work with volunteer groups. Right. And this is how they work, you know, and do a presentation. And then that way there, that'll, that'll allow us to see what the models are like, to see what their volunteer intake forms look like, um, to figure out what their volunteer numbers are and what their tasks are. Okay. And that's a place to start. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we, there are wheels that exist, I think. Yeah, and I, I, I just, I mean, sustainably over time, if the group of volunteers, whether it's a nonprofit or whatever, and the tree commission, are not somehow linked in some sort of structural way. Mm -hmm. I, I fear for the inevitability of some sort of issue or conflict, or just, or just not not getting the most out of what both groups right. can do together. Not for control or anything, but just just for that synergy and information sharing and collaboration. Okay, I would just add that, that Rich said. You know, we're new. We're taking on a lot, and I don't see that. Any of what's happening here is a problem. It's just part of both things. You know, we're, so it's a growing thing. We're, we're trying to figure out how to work together, and you know. So anyway, I, I just sort of cast a positive light on it because we're, you know, it's it's worth having a discussion. I think the last thing that we all want to do is folks working in this room is really walk out of here have a certain because we have we have done more. I worked here for 27 years. I'm not saying something. We've done more in a year and a half than I have done. My career. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. seriously, if you think about it, I probably planted 500 trees by myself through the 24 years. But since we've been tree warden, you know, we, we planted 160 trees, we've got the public tree trees, we're, we're doing a lot of work here. So I think we have to sit back and, and look at that and also know all of us bring strengths to the stable, all of us um, have uh, weaknesses, and hopefully other people's strengths will be. Uh, will be our strengths to eliminate that weakness. So we just need to work together. And I, you know, I don't, it's, it's hard when you have a group of people that don't want to work together. And we already saw this in another few other commissions and a few other bodies. So we just need to make sure that uh, we walk out of this room actually remembering the mission that we were brought all to this table for. And how we go about getting that information otherwise is through investigation. So I think it would be good to have a couple of folks investigate. Okay, so um, just I to wrap so. up, I, we only have a few more minutes left in the meeting, and I want to make sure we do to do. So just to wrap up, um, you nodded your head, Marilyn, about yep. researching models for volunteer organizing around tree municipal tree programs. Yep. I'm happy to support you on that. Okay. Um, and I will put in, uh, in the, some time in the July agenda when we're not having the new DPW director here uh, inviting. August. You want August? Okay. Um, inviting August. folks that you have in mind for being part of a subcommittee to create a volunteer structure and organize volunteers. Have, have the people that are interested in actually uh, organizing. Orga organizing volunteers? Like right. They're not community. part of a subcommittee. No, they're not part of anything. Discussion about. Yeah. Discussion about this. This is per Todd's recommendation. Um, you mean people from outside the commission? Yes. Yeah. 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 It would be part of this subcommittee? Yes. Yeah. So this would be a subcommittee of commissioners and... I would move that only one, well, I would keep it under form so that you can just meet informally in the living room and okay. do stuff and then that commissioner can report periodically to the commission on the activities of the subcommittee. Right. So it would be a... Yeah, I, I missed the subcommittee. A subcommittee we want to have, have less than a quorum. That would, that would be my But it could be as few as one person. As few as one person. Yeah. This is not fully formed. We're just going to open a discussion about it, and you invite your people to that discussion. And there might be other models that yeah. you know, are okay. fine, but that, from my municipal mindset, this is how things are ordered. Okay. Right. There's not that many to do. There's like six, so this is what I captured. Uh, Rich is going to submit the RFP for the uh, inventory. Um, there's 
uh, June 22nd public shade tree hearing on eight, at 86 Massachusetts Toyot that everyone's going to attend. Um, Todd and Richard Stump is going to uh, draft the email letter to both the planning department and the building department regarding um, the two recent cases of <coughs> lack of adherence to due process about cutting trees on city property. Uh, Lily's going to ask Molly if anything already exists like this. Um, I'm going to, with Rob's help, if, if you want to work together, uh, look for models of volunteer groups, um, including volunteer intake forms, numbers, tasks, and Lily is going to invite um, some of these volunteers uh, to an office meeting. Okay. Motion to adjourn? No, I've got one question. I want to point something out. I'm here to volunteer to plan trees. I'm not here to watch like it's not really my interest, so I think it's really important that I'm a volunteer, you're a volunteer, we're all volunteers. The goal is to figure out how to plant trees in our city and make a lasting impact. I'm not here to fight, and I don't want to be part of a group that's fighting. So I think everybody, everybody needs to grow up and not fight, because I'm volunteering. Like, I'm getting paid to this. I think I'm not working yeah, all, this. all groups fight, and this is politics. It's yeah, but, people. Okay, so Andrew, I'm sorry I fought today. No, no, it's just <laughs> but but I I I have issues that how to get things done and I'm yeah. getting things done. So so one of the ways that you can provide getting these issues resolved is by actually talking fights individuals outside of <laughs> preferably talking as adults outside of here and actually trying to resolve the issues. So when you come to the table you don't have the issues. It's, it's I think that's really what it amounts to. I think the train goes off the tracks sometimes very easily. And everybody here has a passion in this room for some part of urban forestry, right? So everybody's, everybody has a passion. Everybody brings something different. So everybody has to respect that amongst each other. And if there's an issue between two of you, um, my door is always open to cut, come people, people come sit in my office and talk to me, or send me emails or call me or whatever. I'd be more than happy to help. And the key thing with working with difficulties is not to um, ignore them, but when things start to diverge, instead of sniffing it like, oh, nothing's wrong, is to have the skills to broaden it, explore it, and then bring it back constructively. So I, I think there's a process that we did pretty well with today and we, we could work on. So I don't see this as fighting. I, I see it as an issue came up and we were trying as best we could to address it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that um, we should avoid conflict. If it's moving us to a better tree program, we have to figure those things out. And that's why I'm here too. Um, it's not just to plant trees, it's to create a lasting tree program. And so I, um, I don't want us to be conflict averse, but I want us to be respectful and collaborative and have our um, goodwill in mind. All right, motion to adjourn. So maybe so we do have a question. Oh, sorry. Are we pursuing? Is anybody oh, pursuing? Yes. Sorry, I forgot that, Jay. I have that on the list. Yeah. I think we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Ready, man. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.